So in this video, we're going over some habits that footballers with a high level of IQ or intelligence in the game display and they have. Now you might be displaying some of these or you might need to work on some of these, but to become aware of what makes up a smart player, a player that makes good decisions, a player that's intelligent on the pitch, it's a high football IQ, will only help you to be more like that player and learn to be more like that player. So we're going over what five of these habits are coming up next. Hi everyone, welcome to Simply Soccer. My name is Dave, where we are producing videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. If you haven't already, get my free ebook, Game Changer, which is also gonna help you do this. It's actually a 50 plus page ebook that is gonna help take your game to that next level. So download that for free down below. Now let's get into what these habits of smart players are so that you can start making them your own habits. Starting in reverse order, we're gonna go with number five. So this one's a simple one, but it does take a bit of work to get into it and it's following your instincts. The smart players, you might think because we're using the word smart or IQ, they're thinking all the time. They're in the game overthinking, analyzing everything like, you know, just really overthinking, but football is a fast paced game. Yes, there are going to be moments when you can think through something, but a lot of the time it's instincts and you develop your instincts on the training ground. A lot of the smartest players, they develop their instincts and then they allow their instincts to play out when they're in matches. They're in flow. And when you're in flow, when you're in the moment, when you're acting on instinct, you react faster, you play better, and you typically make better decisions. And so you want to get to the point where you are working mainly on instinct. I know it seems counterintuitive, but you don't want to be thinking too much when you're in the match itself. Again, there'll be times like when you're taking a free kick or pauses in the match when you can think of something, when you can maybe come up with some sort of strategy. But really, in real time, you don't have that much time to think. You have to act on instinct. In fact, in the comments, put, I am a smart footballer. Make sure you align to that. You really try to go for that and make sure you're doing the things we go over in this video to become that more and more. Now let's get into number four. So number four is actually something that's going to help you tap into your instincts more and that's calmness under pressure. Two things happen when people get under pressure. They either go completely blank and they freeze up and not blank in the sense of like oh now you can use your instincts. No just completely freeze up and panic or they overthink the situation and they believe that they're going to be able to think their way out of it. And so when you remain calm calm, this gives you direct access to your instincts, your intuition, the ability to stay in flow. So if someone pressures you, you're able to calmly and smoothly do that thing you've probably done a thousand times in practice, like shield the ball or pass the ball off simply instead of do something that you would never do, but are only doing because you panicked. Being calm is one of the things that all smart players have developed to the level where it just seems like they're geniuses in certain situations, but they're just doing what they know they can do and not feeling the pressure. Like how many times have we seen a Xavi or a Pirlo get out of a situation many of us go like man that's such a ballsy thing to do well the reason is because they don't see it that way because they're calm you know if they were panicking in a situation they probably wouldn't even try it or if they did try it they probably would lose it remaining calm is one of the smartest things you can do and this is again a thing you can develop put yourself in pressure situations in your training and work on being able to get so good at this so that you have the muscle memory that when you're in those situations it matches you know how to do it so well that you can keep your calm in those situations if you're enjoying this video so far, getting some value out of it, please hit that like button and we'll move now on to number three. Number three is a big one and it's learn from your mistakes quickly and work to get better at them and not make them again. This is what the smartest players do because guess what? The smartest players still make mistakes. The difference is they don't get really too worked up about it. They analyze what they did and they try and work on it so they don't make it again. Now you can do this in two ways. You can do this in the moment. So let's say you make a mistake in the match. Instead of getting all frustrated about it, just take a moment to be like, okay, what did I do and how can I fix this? You know, you can really analyze that within a split second. And then you can also, when the game is over, analyze your overall game and go like, okay, I need to work on this, this, and that. Again, people who are smart, people who, who improve um, all of the time, it's because they're looking at things and going, how can I, I improve? How can I work on this mistake? How can I better this? I took that player one-on-one -on -one and it didn't work out. Was it the wrong time to take them one-on-one? -on -one? Did I just not perform the move efficiently? But when you ask better questions, you get better answers. Answers. And so analyze your mistakes and see where you can improve. And usually the smartest players, they improve upon their mistakes quicker than other players. One, because they're looking at them. They're not getting too emotionally attached to them in a sense of like, oh, I don't even want to look at that. And they're feeling so bad about it. They're looking at it and going, how can I improve this? And if you can improve these mistakes quickly, you'll just become a better player faster and you'll be smarter because you'll know what works and what doesn't work for you. Number two is
it's working intentionally on mindset and the mental side of the game. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I harp on about this all the time, but obviously the smart players are working on the mental side. They know they have to be calm. They know they have to be confident. They know that in order to be a player that makes good decisions, they need to work not just on the physical side, but also the mental side. Now, I have a course called Complete Soccer Confidence if you really want help and a proven system to develop this. But, you know, whether you get that or not, you really need to make sure you're doing something towards this and you're working on this like any other skill. Confidence, mindsets, um, the mental side of the game is a skill like anything else. And number one, another habit the smartest players do is they study the best players. You can even listen to players who are really smart now and you'll hear that they looked up to other professional players or when they weren't pros to players who were professionals that were at the top of their game and they would study these players. And I guarantee they still do it. I guarantee there are midfielders who will study the Kevin De Bruyne, who would have studied the Iniestas, the Javis, and taken parts of their game and tried to apply them to their own. And this is something you want to be doing often. Look at these players and don't just admire what they're doing and be like, oh, that's so cool. Actually see and break down what they're doing. Watch videos that do it for you if you want, and then take that and apply it to your own game. So when someone tells you, oh, Kevin De Bruyne is able to see that pass and execute it because he has awareness, you can see he looked over his shoulder at this point so he could see the run being made, he followed his instincts here, and he has the technique to do it, you break that down and go, okay, I need to make sure I'm getting my head up, I need to be aware of what's going on around me, I need to follow my instincts, and I need to work on my technique to the point where I can do that, right? So breaking down what the best are doing and applying it to your own game is gonna be one of the most useful tactics that will help you become a smarter player because you can just look at what smart players are doing, break down what they're doing, and then apply it to your own game. Now, it will take some time before you're able to do things in the same way, or even close to the same way, but that's how you're gonna get better and smarter by studying these players and applying, more importantly, what they're doing into your own game. All right, guys, so those are five habits smart players use, and these are five things you can start applying to your own game to become a smarter player. Again, football IQ is a, a habit a lot of players players don't think about and don't work on intentionally, but it's just going to go so far to making you a better player if you apply it into your game. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning into this video and I'll see you in the next one.